So if we allow two waves traveling in opposite directions on a straight string to overlap, what is likely to happen? Well, you get a standing wave. But what exactly are standing waves and what are the characteristics that define such waves is the topic we'll explore in this lesson today. And we'll also learn what is resonance and what are conditions A, B and C that are necessary for resonance to happen. Well, before we dive into this, I'd like you to press the subscribe button so that you can continue to get notifications on all new videos from me. So let us see the two waves moving in opposite directions through a series of graphs. So these are the two waves and you can see that these are shots of waves taken at various times. Well, we can see in this third set of diagrams how the two waves are adding up at various times to give a resultant wave. And we'll quickly realize that this is nothing but superposition principle at work. So we can see that constructive interference occurs where peaks of both waves align and destructive interference happens when peaks and valleys align resulting in kind of neutralization effect that collapses the two waves to y is equal to zero. Now the interesting part of this waveform is that there are places where string just does not move and we call these points nodes and we can see four such nodes here and then here are regions or other points in the strings where the amplitude of the wave is at its max and these are called antinodes. So these wave patterns are what we call standing waves and you might ask why why these should be called standing waves because they look quite like uh, visually at least any wave we have dealt with so far. Well, we say that these are standing waves because the wave pattern does not move to left or right. So what we can say in a summary statement is that if two sinusoidal waves having the same amplitude and wavelength travel in opposite directions along a straight string, they can interfere to produce a standing wave which does not move like a traveling wave. So let us take two waves of the equations uh, 1 y 1 is equal to a sin kx minus omega t which obviously is moving in the positive x direction and the second wave is y 2 is equal to a sin kx plus omega t which obviously is moving in the negative x direction. Well, before we move ahead, I'd like to make a clarification around a question I have received from some of you. And the question is that when we started the chapter, we took a cos kx minus omega t as an equation to represent a waveform. And now in the subsequent lessons, we are taking a sine omega t minus kx to represent a traveling wave. So the question is, can we take sine and cos both to represent traveling waves? So if you consider a waveform represented by a general equation like y is equal to r kx plus minus omega t where r represents any function cos or sine function being two of them then it can be termed as a traveling wave. What is important is that this function should have a combination of x and t in the form kx minus omega t. If this combination is available, it will be called a traveling wave. So in short, as long as kx minus omega t expression appears on the right hand side, the wave qualifies as a traveling wave and we can have sine or cos for r, both can define it as a traveling sine wave. So with this understanding, let us move ahead and if we combine these two waves, that is y1 plus y2, uh, what we get is a resultant wave and let's write the equation of that resultant wave. And we'll call that the displacement of that resultant wave as capital Y is equal to Y1 plus Y2, which in turn is equal to A sine Kx minus omega t plus A sine Kx plus omega t. So in a way, we are adding up 
two waves moving in opposite direction, one in the positive x direction and the other in negative x direction. And if you do a bit of trigonometric jugglery around this, what you get is y is equal to 2a sine kx times cos omega t. And from an earlier understanding of what qualifies as a traveling wave, we can clearly see that this equation definitely does not have the expression kx plus or minus omega t and therefore is not a traveling wave. What it actually represents is a standing wave. And since it is a standing wave, unlike a traveling wave, it does not transfer energy from one end to the other. And in this equation, we can see that 2a sine kx can be seen as the amplitude of the standing wave because the max y value that you can get in this is when cos omega t is equal to 1. But on closer observation, you'll find that this amplitude is variable because it has a variable x in it. So for various x values, you'll have a different amplitude. And well, it seems a little strange since normally amplitude is a constant often represented as uh, a capital A or uh, something like a YM. But then if you visualize a standing wave, you'll find that each point of the string is vibrating about Y axis and has a certain maximum Y displacement or amplitude. And this is quite unlike a traveling wave where each point in the string gets the opportunity to experience amplitude A, capital A, which is, which is a maximum displacement that a traveling wave goes through. And why each point experiences maximum amplitude in a traveling wave is because the wave is moving with a certain velocity and the wave travels. And as the wave travels, each point swings to the maximum A value periodically. So this is a unique feature of a standing wave where the amplitude is a variable and each point on the string has its own amplitude. So we can see that the amplitude will be zero when sine kx is equal to zero. And for this to happen, kx should equal to n pi. So if we denote this amplitude as a dash, then we can say that a dash is equal to zero when, when sine kx is equal to zero. And for this to happen, kx should equal to a multiple of pi. So we'll say it should be n pi where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And if you take k is equal to 2 pi upon lambda, what we get is x equals n lambda upon 2. So we've taken this expression k is equal to 2 pi upon lambda and substituted in this equation to get x is equal to n lambda upon 2. So you get your nodes for all such x values where the point does not move at all. You can also see that each node is separated by lambda upon 2. As in if you take a certain value of n and you take the consecutive value, let's say you take n as 5 and then you take n as 6 and you substitute n is equal to 5 here and then n is equal to 6 and you take the difference you'll get the difference as lambda upon 2 and the amplitude will be 2a which is the maximum amplitude possible that is what we're saying is a dash would have a maximum amplitude which is 2a when sine kx is equal to 1 and for this to happen kx should equal pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 or 5 pi by 2 and so on. Or we can say that kx should equal n plus 1 by 2 pi. And again, if k is equal to 2 pi upon lambda, then what you get is x is equal to n plus half lambda upon 2 for all n values of 0, 1, 2 and so on. So you get your antinodes at all these x values and here also you can see that the difference between each antinode is half a wavelength. 
well you can put n is equal to any value say 6 and then take n is equal to 7 and then take the difference you will find that the difference comes to lambda upon 2 and this will be true for any two consecutive n values so that brings us to the topic of resonance so let's take a guitar string and stretch it between two clamps and send a set of sinusoidal waves of a certain frequency through the string in the positive x direction then as the first wave reaches the right end it reflects and travels back to the left well it is obvious that this reflected wave moving to the left will overlap with the wave that is still traveling to the right and when the reflected wave reaches the left end it reflects again and this newly reflected wave begins to move to the right overlapping the waves going to the left as well as the waves moving to the right and if we keep analyzing this wave we'll find that we have a bunch of overlapping traveling waves which interfere with each other and when this happens for certain frequencies not all frequencies the interference produces a standing wave pattern or you could say an oscillating pattern with nodes and anti nodes like this and when this happens we say that a standing wave has been created and the chord or the string is said to be resonating at these certain frequencies that are called resonant frequencies and if the string is oscillating at some frequency other than a resonant frequency a standing wave will not appear so let's take this further and see the mathematics around this so we will stretch a string between two clamps that are distance l apart and we'll try to find an expression for frequency that produces resonance in the string in terms of length l and velocity v of the wave a good starting point will be to recognize the fact that ends of the string here are nodes since they are stationary and we know that this is a necessary condition for a standing wave well if you observe this pattern of loop formation where we have two nodes and one anti node in between we can say that this is a standing wave we can also see that half a wavelength spans the entire distance l or the string's length so we can say that lambda upon 2 is equal to l we can therefore infer that if the left going and right going traveling waves have a pattern like this due to interference they must have a wavelength lambda equal to 2l well another pattern that would have nodes at ends could be this now this one has three nodes and two anti nodes and can be named two loop pattern for waves moving in either direction they must have a wavelength lambda equal to l likewise another pattern could be this that has four nodes and three anti nodes this therefore could be called a three loop pattern and we can see that here l is equal to three by two lambda or one and a half wavelengths you you have this as lambda and another half a lambda which makes it one and a half lambda or three by two lambda and therefore lambda is equal to two by three l by now you would have figured out that this can keep continuing and the patterns can have more and more loops uh, with more nodes and anti nodes increasing by one node at each step and an additional lambda by two gets fitted into length l so we can set up a standing wave on a string of length l with wave that have wavelengths equal to one of the values below that is lambda is equal to 2l upon n for n is equal to 1 2 3 and so on so let's put a subheading uh, resonance over here and as i said we can write lambda is equal to 2l upon n where n is equal to 1 2 3 and so on and the corresponding uh, resonant frequencies would be f is equal to v upon lambda and if we substitute the value of lambda 
in this equation what we get is f is equal to n times v upon 2l and for n is equal to let us say 1 we get f1 is equal to v upon 2l for n equal to 2 we get f2 is equal to 2v upon 2l n equal to 3 we get f3 is equal to 3v upon 2l so you can see that this equation tells us that the resonant frequencies are integer multiples of the lowest resonant frequency f is equal to v upon 2l which corresponds to n is equal to 1 well, physicists call this oscillation mode with the lowest frequency as a fundamental mode or the first harmonic when n is equal to 1. Then the second harmonic is the oscillation mode with n is equal to 2. The third harmonic is with n is equal to 3 and so on and so forth. Also, the associated frequencies are called F1, F2, F3 and so on. And a collection of all possible oscillation modes is labeled the harmonic series and n is called the harmonic number of the nth harmonic well for a certain string under a certain tension each resonant frequency will have a particular oscillation pattern and if this frequency is in the audible range you can hear an audible sound that would in a way represent that particular shape of the string so i'm really keen to know from you if you've ever been to a rock concert and as a student of physics, thought of the music there as waves entering into your ears. If yes, leave your comment below. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.